coming together with me on this beautiful day. And I'm actually going to close these doors and keep the little visitors out. There's some, some of them in that very room sleeping right now, and they may wake up and want to investigate. <clears throat> Let's take a slow, deep breath into our body. And let that breath expand the diaphragm. So that is part of releasing the tension in the low back. And let's do that again. Roots the body bones down. And as you're rooting, feel the pelvis and its connection to the floor, the blanket, the prop. Investigate and make sure that you feel weighted on each body bone equally. From within, create that internal lift that helps extend the spine and the central energy channel upwards. Now support that lift. The abdominal muscles help you, but then relax around that. Let your eyeballs sink back in the sockets so that they minimize the pressure against the eyelids. Relax your jaw, relax your tongue. And then bring your hands up to your heart and feel that connection of the physical body, the mind that you associate yourself with, and then that inner light of awareness. Bring these parts of you together for a moment. Feel your way into that inner being. And now exhale, release your head forward. Let your arms relax, palms up. And open your eyes, blink a few times, and then lift your head. Welcome. Raise the arms up, shoulder stretch. Then release. Twist to your right. Release, twist your left. And release. Let's bring our legs out in front of us and pump the thigh muscles multiple times. And then go ahead and lie down on your back. So take all the props out of the way that you might bang into with your legs and your arms so that we can do the full body stretch. Go ahead, begin. Remember that the full body stretch is inhale and then exhale, reach the arms and legs apart. We do that three times, and some of you are probably already doing the single knee to chest. So we'll go with that. So this time is inhale, lengthen the arms and legs apart, and exhale, knee to chest. As you're doing this, if there's any bit of your uh, upper body that you want to lift, you can add that. That way you're getting a stretch, not only in the lower body as you do this, but also in the upper body around the neck and upper thoracic. 
Let's do it one more time. And then some of you may be ready to go ahead and start doing double in your chest. Let's get those joints moving and let's get the breath into the body. Give yourself a big hug and then use the breath to guide yourself to the right. So inhale, exhale over to the right and use the core muscles to pull yourself back up. And then inhale, pause, exhale to the left. Use the abdominals again to pull you back up and inhale, pause. Everything happens on that one exhale to the right and back up. Then you inhale when you're central and then exhale to the left. Notice that I keep my head moving with my torso. One more time, right, nose, breastbone, navel, pubic bone, all stay in a straight line with each other. And one more time. Good. And then place your feet on the floor. Now we'll do the bit knee twist. Now for this one, I'll turn this way so you can see my, the lower body. Your left leg, this leg will stay straight and the right foot goes on the left thigh. The left hand comes to the outer right knee, the right arm is up to the side palm up. We'll twist onto the outer left hip. Then release and switch sides. Again, now the right hand comes to the outer left knee. Pull your knee over to the right. You have to keep the, the uh, body active in these twists so that you don't put the spine at risk. So press out through that right leg and lift the lower abdominals. And then inhale, come up and release. Stretch your legs out for just a moment. And now let's find our strap, because if we have back tension, we better stretch those hamstrings out and some of the other hip muscles also. So here we go. Now today, I'm gonna to make a loop with my belt. This isn't necessary, but I like to keep reminding people of different options when they're doing their um, hip openers when you need a belt so that you don't have to just rely on one way that you maybe get tired of or you maybe don't like it. Like holding the belts can be hard for some people with arthritis in their fingers. When I do my belt like this with the tail pointing down towards me, I can then just pull the tail and tighten the belt. And the idea is to let the fingers drape across that loop and drop the shoulders down. If I have to bend my elbows to get the stretch, I just tighten the belt. So my fingers again, Clutch the belt for just a second and then relax. And now the weight of the arms is what pulls my leg into the stretch. And everyone check your right knee and make sure that it's straight. Check your left knee and make sure that it's grounded. Again, I highly recommend this for people who have challenges with their grips. If you have a challenge gripping the, the belt. Now let's release that right leg and do your left leg. If there's a difference between sides, you can always adjust the belt. But remember, the more open side should not progress faster than the tighter side. You always want to make sure that you're trying to get the tight side to catch up to the looser side instead of continuing to stretch both equally. And the reason for this, I hope that's logical, is uh, because if one side's looser and one side's tighter, and it always is that way, that is an imbalance. And so we don't want to support the imbalance. We want to bring the hips into balance. Again, check your left knee, make sure the knee is straight, and keep the left leg pressing down. Excuse me, the right leg pressing down. Now we'll do the outer hip. Now I'm going to do my right leg again, like I did last week, so that you can see where I put my thumb. And this time what I'll do with my loop is just put the 
hand into the loop so that the strap is across the back of my right hand, excuse me, left hand, and then I reach around and hold both sides of the belt loop. That way now, again, my fingers don't have to work so hard. But my right hand is free to now come into the hip traction practice, also hip rotation. So I press the thumb into the crease, that's the traction, then I roll the hip towards the left heel, that is the rotation. And then I can cross the foot over to the right, We're at, over to the left. We're ready for the outer hip stretch. Parivita Sutta Padangasasana. Hang in there, just a few more breaths. You do want to check that left leg and make sure that it's not rolling out. Then bring the leg up and release. And now we'll do the left leg. And now you can't see me do my adjustment. So I'm going to spin the whole pose all the way around so that now you can see what I do again in case you missed it with my left hand. The right hand has the belt around the back of the wrist and now it's holding the loop. So the fingers again don't have to work so hard. You can do it the old way if you want or any way that you like. Thumb in the hip crease, hand cups the outer left hip and then cross the leg to the right. Big toe, left big toe, right shoulder, they line up together. This action is, is really more important than probably what some people think because we typically, once, because of tight outer hip muscles, what happens when you cross the leg over to the right is that the hip will actually jack up due to some of the muscular tightness. So we have to help that not happen by pressing into that thigh bone and rolling the outer hip towards the right heel. Now bring the leg up and release. Now today when we do uh, the Parsha Sutta Padangasthasana, we're going to do both legs in the pose. So let's, I'm going to turn this way so that you can see what's going to happen with the legs. I'm going to catch the, now this will be my left foot, but it'll be your, your right, because if you look at the screen, I want you to see me mirroring you. And once again, the strap goes across the back of the wrist if you're using a, lip, a loop, and then you hold the belt. Today, I'm going to keep the left knee bent, foot flat on the floor, and take that leg out to the side with the knee bent, and then take the right leg out to the side. And then what you want to look at is that the two thigh bones are still even. So that means that the, the right leg is heavier, so we tend to rock over to the right hip. We actually want to stay right in the center of that sacrum, right in the middle of that pelvis. But let both legs be stretching. Let's lift the heavier leg first, exhale, then the bent knee, and release. Again, the right knee is going to go out to the side, <clears throat> and that's going to be um, stretching the inner thighs, some of them in, in one way, and then we'll take the leg to the left, straight leg to the left, and we'll let those muscles stretch in another way. One straight leg stretch, one's a bent knee stretch. So if you teeter over to the left buttock a little bit, you have to lift the leg and bring yourself back to centralize. And then use an exhale to lift the left leg up, which is the heavier leg, do that one first. And then you can assist the right leg up. Remove the belt and stretch the legs out. Take a deep breath and just relax for a moment. What I'd like for us to do now is bend your knees and roll over to the side and look around the room, or maybe you've already got a chair in your room, find something that is maybe a little bit lower than your hips, and we'll do a downward facing dog um, on that surface so that the reason why I'm having you elevated helps the shoulders to be much more open for most of us than the regular downward facing dog. And therefore we can super get the shoulders open and super lengthen the spine. 
So it's just a different way. So I'm going to have my metal folding chair, but you look around, you say, I've got a coffee table. I can make sure it's braced up against the sofa or an end table, or just go in the kitchen and use the counter. Put your hands on the surface, set that, and you can see my shape is really more like a half board then. But I'm pushing into the chair that helps me create that recoil away from the chair and create some length in my spine and an opening in my shoulders. If you see like how in a dog pose, my shoulders might not be able to open all the way. I might actually be a little bit lifted in the shoulders, but having more height for some of us will help us create more space in a very tight joint in this position. And notice that um, regardless of if you, I hope you're listening, if you can't see me, and that is, I'm not gonna hang the head, which will squeeze my throat closed. I'm gonna keep the ears level with the arms. And then we'll walk up to that, whatever you're using, chair, end table, coffee table, surface, edge, whatever it is you've got. Now I'm gonna turn my chair around and I'm gonna pretend that this is the kitchen sink. I can't go out of the room to my kitchen sink. I, I thought about it, but I'm hooked up to two minutes, like I've got an extra speaker and um, other things that we're all plugged into. But you can just step outside, but we're gonna do three things. And when you do each of these three, count six breaths, maybe have me where you can hear me or just count six breaths and then come back and join me. But I'm gonna show you real quick. Number one, hold on to that kitchen because we have to have some ways of doing traction. We don't have the yoga wall anymore. But you'll lean back and count six breaths, come up, pause, repeat, step the feet a little closer, bend the knees and count six breaths. And then you'll turn around and put your hands on the sink like this and lift your chest. Now it's a little low for me here, so I'll just walk out a little bit and bend the elbows and I can get my shoulder stretch here. So here we go. Kitchen sink stretch. Hold on to the sink and lean back. Six breaths. Here's one. Remember, you want your hips behind the ankles. And you have, want your ears level with your arms. Don't hang the head, that'll squeeze your throat. Now we're all getting close to six. I may be ahead of you, I may be behind you. I'm gonna step up a little bit, still hang on to my sink and lean back. Now, I can't actually lean my full weight, body way back holding onto a chair. We'll just all flip over together. But I am creating the image of what you'll be doing hanging onto the sink. Six breaths. Let the spine lengthen by the weight of your pelvis dropping to the floor. And then come up. And if you're just now getting the four or five press, keep going. Don't worry, we'll catch up in just a moment. Now I'm gonna turn around. Now I'm gonna turn my hands so the fingers will drop down into the sink. And sometimes all you have to do is back your feet up and lean forward. And you have enough stretch to open the chest and shoulders. Now, because I have a low chair, and you could have something in your house that you're using instead of the sink, I'm gonna walk my feet forward bend the elbows, and then lift the chest. Now I can get a shoulder stretch too. You could drop the head in this practice if you like. That'll help stretch the neck muscles. Or look straight ahead. I wouldn't recommend lifting the chin and creating more tension. There go my boys. That's the main one right there, that's grand. Okay, so that's about six breaths also. So now we're gonna get a chair or something to sit on and do three stretches with a sitting in a chair. Or anything that you can say, I recommend something firm though, the sofa might be too soft, but something that you can sit on and do a seated twist with me. So number one, have your knees coming straight out of the hips and have your ankles right below your knees.
Then put your left hand on your right knee and your right hand will hold your chair somewhere or the sofa, whatever you're sitting on and twist to your left. The nice thing about sitting up is that the spine can extend sitting up on a surface like a chair or, um, or a table or something is that instead of sitting on the floor in one of the uh, beautiful uh, bent like positions uh, of all the different yoga postures is we are able to get the spine extended up right better. There's nothing usually putting on the pelvis and distorting the alignment of the spine. Every inhale, lift a little more, and every exhale, try to find somewhere to twist. Then release. Now we'll do the other side. So your right hand comes to the outer left knee, and then your left hand is going to come behind you. It can be on the chair to help with you lift, or you can hold the chair somewhere that you can find, whatever feels comfortable, and we'll twist to the left. Uh, you know, I don't know what you've got in your house and what you're using, so it's hard for me to give you all the instructions that you may need. Just find something for your left hand to either brace itself on and help pull you into the twist or push down and continue your lifting. And release. The second stretch that we'll do in the chair is a forward bend. To do this one, I'm going to widen the feet and allow my torso to drop through the legs. I'm on the edge of the chair seat, by the way. I'm not going to sit this far back. I'm going to scoot up to the edge and bend forward and place my hands on the floor. If the floor is too far away, you can't reach it, then you can put your hands on a block or one under each hand, and then slide the hands out or slide the block out. Let the torso drop as best you can between the legs. And by the way, the feet can be slightly turned out in this position. Let's take several deep breaths into the back of the body while we stay here, just a little bit more. This will be a wonderful release for some of us for the tension that we hold in the low back. Then we'll walk our hands back and then reach up onto your legs and push yourself up. So you're not going to use those muscles to lift you up as you just stretch. So it's sort of like the wall hang. You get those muscles to release. You don't want to then use those muscles to lift weight. They stretch, they relax, they want to continue to rest. Now we'll do singly to chest with ankle movements and sitting. So let's do the right leg first. So lift your right leg up and give it a hold. And you can also hold behind the leg. And while holding the leg in this uh, position that will stretch the, the hip extensors, we'll begin to move the foot in an ankle pumping direction, and then ankle circles, and then the other way. Release that into the other side. Pumping, circles, and the other way. And now we're ready to do almost some of our standing postures. Let's do Parigasana first, which is gate pose. This practice now is going to move to helping us unlock some of the tension in the lateral side of our body. So number one, Parigasana, the gate pose. Let's move, uh, if you have a chair on your mat, you can move that off to the side now. This pose is done in kneeling. Oh, and by the way, if you cannot get on the floor like Kathy, I don't recommend she does this. Um, she can do her version like this, where she sits. So this is for anyone who cannot put weight on their knees. Just stick this leg out to the side, keep this one facing forward, and you'll create the shape of gate pose like this. That is all. And the rest of us will come to kneeling and do it that way.
I'm going to put a block on each side of the mat to be in front of my leg. That way, because of the, uh, when the right leg is out to the side, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's take the right leg out to the side like this. Let me lift this block for a moment so you can see this. If I put my hand on the leg, I'm at risk to put a lot of pressure in the knee joint. And, you know, we, we just want to be careful with that. Now, if I push the toe mounds towards the floor and squeeze the quadricep, I can help um, keep the knee from feeling locked. So press the toe mounds towards the floor and squeeze the thigh, lift your arms, and as you reach out over the right leg, make sure that you don't lean forward. Place your right hand on the block, and that can go to different levels as long as you don't compress the right side of your torso, and then take that left arm over your head by your ear. So now what you're looking at in this posture is that opening that you can create in the left side of the torso. The other piece of it is the rotation. So we tend to rotate forward. We would like to derotate and bring the bottom ribs forward and the top ribs back. Keep the neck in neutral unless you feel like you can look up without neck pain. But usually because of any some distortion along the spinal column, somewhere along the way, we may not have the best alignment. If we try to turn the head to look up, we'll feel tension in the neck. Now use your breath and inhale up you come, and we'll do the other side. So now the left leg is in the position. Remember, I'm going to press down into the heel and squeeze my thigh muscle. It keeps me from locking the leg and sinking down into the joint. Lift your arms up, reach out over the left leg, and place your hand down on the block. The right arm will swing over your head by your ear. You know, of course, most of you have been practicing with us for quite some time. If this arm has any issues, as always, you can just rest your hand on your hip. Again, breathe into your pose and bring the bottom ribs forward and the top ribs back. Inhale up your calm and bring the left knee back onto the mat and rest in child's pose. After going from side to side, it's a nice idea to balance the two sides of your spine. Slide the hands back, put the hands under your shoulders and push yourself up. Let's come to standing and do triangle pose now. Another pose that will offer some opening in the left side of the body. For this, I'm going to move my blanket off the mat and move my blocks behind me. Starting in the mountain posture, we'll bring the hands up to the heart and in the knees and step the feet apart. Turn the left foot in and the right leg out and reach out over the right leg. It's just like Padigasana gate pose. Reach out over the right leg and then the right hand comes down to the block, but this time the left arm extends up. So this pose actually opens the front of the body that across the chest from the breastbone into the shoulders. So it's a great posture for people who are tight and collapsed here when they open their upper body up. Also in this posture, just like Padigasana, we want to bring the top ribs back and the bottom ribs forward. Feel the breath moving in your body in this posture. Sometimes we get into a pose and it feels like we should hold the breath or we, we do it, but not consciously. Make sure the breath is filling the body. We're ready to come up. Inhale, come up and turn the feet forward. Now let's adjust to take the pose to the other side. Right foot in, left leg out. Keep this, the left side of the body long, Trikonasana. Now, once again, bring the bottom ribs forward and the top ribs back. Remember, part of the practice is to open up the, one of the lines of the arms. 
in the, in the torso so that it goes from the breastbone into the palms. So if we're falling forward, we don't get to open up the front of the body. So remember, when you practice Trikonasana, the triangle pose, that old way of practicing that still is new when we do it, with the back, the back body against the wall. It reminds us, reminds us how the torso should be. Now on the inhale, up you come, turn your feet forward, bend the knees, and as you exhale, step your feet together and let your arms rest by your side. That is so refreshing. Let's do one more of the lateral poses that will help us with our back tension. And that is the side angle pose, Utita Parshal Konasana. Let's take one more resting breath. In this pose, before we begin, I just want to remind everybody that if the blocks are too low and you start to fall forward, keep your elbow on your knee. Inhale, step your feet wide apart. Left foot in and right leg out. If it's hard for you to have the feet this wide apart where you can bring the knee over the ankle and the thigh bone is almost parallel to the floor, then shorten the stance and it'll be okay. Remember, this will be the closer the feet are together, the harder it is going to be to get the right hand down on the block of the floor. So you might end up keeping your elbow on your knee. Otherwise, adjust the pose with your hand on the block of the floor behind the leg and then take that left arm over your head. If you look at my left hip, it's a little bit up. I'd like for it to be down so that between the outer ankle and the back of my left wrist, I have a nice straight line. So I'm gonna wiggle my left foot away from the right foot and bend my right knee a little more. Now I have the delicious long straight line that lets me know I'm opening up the whole left side of my torso. Bye bye to all that tension. Be strong in your legs for this one. There's a lot of weight over the right leg. And so the left leg has to do a lot of extra work to help it hoist us up. Here we go. <laughs> there. Ready for the other side. Right foot in, left leg out. And don't forget that strengthening the legs helps the back. Bend the left knee. So you get a lot for your money with this practice. Again, I could stop here, especially if I have to have my feet close together, or I could put a chair behind me. But I want to go ahead and go for a wider stance and sink my right hip down to the pose, then hand to the block, go the level that you can without sinking forward, and open up the posture. The bottom ribs come forward and the top ribs go back. And then on a big inhalation, up you come, turn the feet forward, inhale, and on the exhale, step your feet together and release your arms by your side. Pause and feel. Last week, we did two exercises to help with strengthening around the core for stability. Let's repeat those because I do think they're very important for people who have back issues. If you continue to have back issues, you have to remind yourself, I must be weak around here. The first one is the balancing cat. So let's put a blanket down. Last week we did two repetitions and three breaths each. Today we'll do three repetitions. So I'm putting my blanket down for my knees. And you'll count your breaths. You'll just keep going because um, I might get ahead of you or behind you, especially since I like to talk and do demonstrations, etc. The right leg will lift. The left arm will lift. I'm going to keep looking at the floor so my neck is long. And count your three breaths. And then switch sides. And now keep going. 
Remember, you might have a longer three breaths than I do, or shorter. Just keep switching and do three repetitions each side. This not only will strengthen in that cross diagonal across the back body, but it will also help strengthen the hips and the shoulders. Both are important, along with the back extensor muscles. So one more time with the right leg and the left arm. And one more time with the left leg and the right arm. Now, if you don't know if your legs and arms are pretty level or not, all you'll have to do is pin yourself up on that screen and see yourself practicing. Once you're done, let's release the tension in the back body by coming into a child's pose. and then come up. Now in the next practice, we support the head and lift the upper torso and just hold it as if we were doing part of a bridge pose. Let's try it. Uh, not bridge, um, boat, uh, boat pose, I apologize. Uh, the boat is going under the bridge. <laughs> so I'm gonna hold my head because it gets heavy. The elbows can be relaxed out to the side. You can point them up. They really won't matter in this particular practice. But on an exhale, I just curl myself up and try to get the shoulder blade tips off the floor and hold it for, you know, uh, everyone's a little different. It depends on how strong you are here. But you could hold it for, you know, three to four or five breaths. Again, I'm holding the head. There's no tension in my neck because the weight of the head falls into the hands. And I don't pull the chin towards the chest, which you can hear changes my voice. The throat stays open. And then just come down and rest. Now that was really good, so I'm sure you enjoyed that. And you can, although there'll be all sorts of wonderful comments in the little chat room on how much you appreciate that. So we'll do it again. If you want to make it more challenging this time, let the feet come off the floor just an inch. Not a lot. Some people don't know what the inch is, it seems. They let their feet up too high. That'll make it easier. Let's not make it easy. Let's challenge ourselves. On the exhale, curl up. Okay, now check in before you make any other adjustments and see that you're breathing. And if you're breathing, then you can do part two. And part two is let the feet lift off the floor just a little. So look at the camera, look at your screen and see my feet just hovering above the floor, not very high at all. It's like you could just put a, a little marble under the feet. That's all, that's all the room there is. And you see how chit chat and talk while we're doing this? You should be able to also. If not, you may have reached the point of strain. Everyone come down and rest. Oh, I, I can tell and sense that you are delighted with that and you want to take it up a notch. So what we'll do, and you, you just take the feet away from the body a little and keep them hovering above the floor, that little inch. It makes the legs a little heavier and will challenge the lower abdominals just a little bit more. If you thought, oh, my lower abs don't want to do that, they don't want to do it, then don't do it. Remember, you have stage one and stage two. Stage three is optional, but here we go. Join me in stage one. And in stage one, you have two options. You could just sort of rest on the shoulder blades because that's all the muscles will let you do. That's a good place to stay. It actually is like, uh, uh, we're gonna progress you to eventually being able to get the shoulder blades off the floor. Next, the feet come off the floor with just an inch. And if you're for doing a yoga, this yoga practice with someone in your home, you can even ask them, Am I lifting my feet up too high or am I really hovering that, that little inch? And then take the feet a little bit. And notice how I don't straighten the legs. I just take the feet a little bit away from me. And so now I can really feel the whole abdominal wall engaged. 
and how wonderful it is. If it ignites back pain, you've overdone. You've got to keep these ribs sinking down. You can't let them poke up. You have to sink the ribs down. And then bring the feet back, release them to the floor, let the upper body go, and rest your arms by your side. I know you know, I've done something good for myself, even in my attempt to just start that practice. And even though I only held it, you could say, for one or two breaths, you have done something good for yourself that a lot of people don't ever quite get. And that is that to support the low back, because there are no bones around, you have a spine, but you don't have a protective covering of that area. It's all muscles and connective tissue in that area. Oh, and that's why it's easy for the low back to get into so much trouble and so much pain. It doesn't have a rib cage, it doesn't have a pelvis, it doesn't have a skull around it. So we need to keep those muscles strong to help stabilize the low back. So now let's do a bridge pose and stretch those muscles out. Step your feet close to you and on the um, exhale, you do a pelvic tuck and lift the pelvis up. There are three ways to do the shoulders, and I think everyone probably knows that. Hold the edges of the mat, especially if you don't have a belt handy, because you can creep the hands a little closer together if you don't have too thick of a mat, and then roll up on the outer upper shoulders. Hold a belt or interlace the fingers. In this practice, you don't look at the screen at all unless your screen is on the ceiling. This goes back to the balancing cat and helps to strengthen extensor muscles, but we're using it now to help open up the abdominal muscles. To come out, try to be as lifted as high as you can in the area of the thorax without pressure in the neck. And as we come down, release one vertebrae at a time. So you're getting like a little massage at each joint. So begin to come down, exhaling. There's a vertebra, there's a vertebra. It takes a long time because you have, uh, well, there's 24 vertebrae all together, but you don't start at the cervical or the upper thoracic. You actually start maybe about T5. So you're just going down with each of those and seeing if you can put, sort of coil down. And that way, each joint gets to open up at the facet joints, whereas sometimes you feel like a whole big clump of, of spine just settled down on the floor. Now, don't be alarmed if that happens. It's going to be something that happens to a lot of us that parts of the spine begin to get tight together. But the good news is that with that practice articulating bridge, you can begin to sort of unwind some of that tension. I vote, and my vote counts a lot, <laughs> that we do that again because it's a very beneficial practice. I've had years of success working with people in therapy with this. So let's us do it again. Lift the pelvis up. We don't even have to tuck the shoulders under because we're going to go straight down. On your exhale, you take each vertebrae, at least what you think is a vertebrae, and put it down on the floor so it moves very slowly. Then you inhale, that's a pause, and you exhale into another. One, two, so you're going to move that slow. Three, four, and I'm maybe getting out of breath. So stop and go again. Oh, I've run out of breath, so stop. And now as I exhale, go down again. So it may take four to five breaths to finally get down to the sacrum and relax. Good. Now we'll do the hook line twist. I'm gonna turn sideways, well, I won't be sideways to you. I should be facing you with my lower body so that you can see this if you need to. The arms aren't necessary, so I'm just gonna take them out to the side of the palms up. I'm gonna take the left leg, so if you're looking in the, at the screen, I am mirroring you, that's the left leg over the right leg, and they hook, you don't have to wrap, that's the rudasana twist, this is hook line twist. I take the right leg and use it to pull the knee down towards the floor. This is going all the way back to a theme, it's like a reoccurring theme that we're having in class today, and that is that the left, the right, the right side of the torso is going to get lengthened. The, this time the hip, as well as the side waist, as well as those intercostals. This is when you have an opportunity to focus the breath in this side. Now 
and then lift the leg up, legs up, both of them, and don't leave one behind, and unwind them, and then hook the other leg, the right leg on top of the left, and then both legs go over to the side. Hmm. Yeah. You might get a click or a pop when you do this. It just sometimes does create a self-adjustment. Now you have the left side, the ribs, the waist, and the hip all open. A little twist in the spine. And then on the inhale, up you come. And then place the feet on the floor. Now, we're doing a Supta Baddha Kunasana with just a little bit of breath awareness. And it's very simple. You don't have to put any support under the body unless you actually want to grab a blanket and put it the length of the spine. But we don't have to have that. We can do it flat. But do assess your breathing in like your sinuses and how your neck feels. If you need to, you can elevate your head with a thin layer of a blanket. Let the bottoms of the feet come together and let the knees drop out to the side. So it is Sukta Baddha Konasana, and I'm just letting the, the feet stick to the mat. Then I begin to breathe in this area that gets a lot of stuckness. The inner thighs, the inner groins, the, the pelvic diaphragm or the um, pelvic floor, and then these lower abdominal muscles, this whole area. And so I begin to move the breath into that space and use the breath to encourage release. And while I'm de deepening the breath and encouraging this area with those four parts to release, then I'm going to place my hands on my lower ribs. Because while releasing this, I'm going to focus on those lateral movements of the diaphragm that sometimes get stuck. And it's hard to find that and get those ribs to move sideways. So using the feedback of your hands, expand the ribs sideways. and then release, and then use your hands to help bring the legs up and pause for a moment. And you can sort of assess how you feel. If there's any movement you want to do, you could do legs rocking. You could say, let me just stretch my hamstrings one more time. Let me do another bridge. If you feel like there's something else you want to do. And then right after that, go ahead and set yourself up for Shavasana. This will be important. Because whenever you're doing something, when you're doing yoga therapeutically, you want to make sure you don't leave this out. You don't have to worry about falling asleep and not waking up to finish doing whatever it is you do at this time of day. <laughs> because I'll be here and I'll bring you out.
Take a slow, deep breath into your body. And then exhale. Wiggle your fingers and your toes. Allow yourself to gently reconnect with those more peripheral parts of your body. And then bend your knees. Let your feet rest on the floor. And for a moment, so let the spine sink even deeper into the earth. Begin to gently rock. Rock the legs side to side. And then roll over to your side and pause. Place your hands on the floor where they can now be of assistance to help you up and adjust your posture to sit comfortably. May every day be filled with light and love and laughter. Namaste.